Next up on Week in Review. Mark's leaf blower is a sucker. Tool Test Raw starts heating up. And Milwaukee MX Fuel breaks the internet. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. And here's what happened this week in the world of power tools. Our buddy from the state up north, Mark Thomas, showed off his new works leaf blower or mulcher or vacuum maybe. I don't know. I think it's all three. So let's just call it the leaf dominator. Sure. Mark has the works Trivec 2.0 that can handle just about anything thrown its way. He tested the Trivec by vacuuming out window wells, mulching collected leaves, and clearing freshly pruned shrubs around his home. He seems pretty happy with how it performed. So if your fall to-do list has any lawn care on it, you should check out Mark's review on the Leaf Dominator on YouTube. Are you one of the lucky few who lives where the weather goes from pleasant to arctic overnight and hibernation is not just an option, it's a forced lifestyle? Well, then you may be searching for some easy solutions for heating your shop and maintaining productivity regardless of the cold. The Wood Whisperer shared several different types of heating solutions that he looked at when he moved to Colorado. There are so many choices like forced air gas, forced air electric heaters, tube heating, pellet or wood stoves, heat pumps, and even heated flooring. Personally, I use indoor bonfires. Whoa, wait, that's not a thing. Sure it is. You just take some old newspapers, some magazines, no, some matches. No, don't do that. Look, if you want to find some safe solutions to heat your shop, take advice from the Wood Whisperer and not Sarah. Y'all ready for Tool Test Raw? Yeah! The guys over at BCG Construction put the Milwaukee M12 Fuel 4-in-1 installation drill driver in the ring with the Bosch 5-in-1 installation drill driver and had them fight to the Tool Test Raw title. Now, these drills are almost identical on paper, so the tests tend to be, well, let's just say close, all right? And that's not much of a surprise. But don't assume you know who won. To find out, you can watch the entire TTR over at BCG Construction on YouTube. The boys are back! Woo! <laughs> That's right. Tools in Action is back to posting almost daily shenanigans, and we couldn't be happier. Why? Well, because when you have this much TIA, you're bound to eventually find things like this. Boom! And they have these portable air tubes. And you just stick them up in there like that. Does it have a suck feature? <laughs> <laughs> no, Eric, it does not. I really feel like you should have been the one that did this segment. I am far too refined for that type of humor, Sarah. <sighs> Whatever. All right, as you can see, Dan showed off his new heating system in his Raxer that literally pulls out of the dashboard and goes up your shirt. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it actually makes sense. You can judge for yourself at Tools in Action on YouTube. I need one of those twos built into this news desk. No, you don't. Awesome. By now, you have no doubt seen the news that overwhelmed the internet coming from Milwaukee last week. Big Red surprised all of us with an entirely new MX Fuel battery platform and six monster tools to take advantage of it, including a core drill, power station, breaker, rocket light, sewer drum machine, and a 14-inch cutoff saw. Each one of these cordless solutions is taking direct shots at gas-powered competitors, and we couldn't be more excited to watch the war commence. If you have been living under a rock this last week and need to get caught up on all of the excitement, you can find our Milwaukee MX playlist in the links below. It's time again for some actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob, Sarah. We're in our remodeling project here, and uh, we took two walls down that were right here. And you can see by the patch and the hardwood floor and the fresh plaster patch, uh, and it used to go right into this wall here. It come off this wall here. A lot of times when we do, when we take a wall out, it leaves a scar. It certainly leaves a scar in the ceiling and the walls, but it leaves a scar in the hardwood floor and you have to patch that or fix it. And a lot of times what we do, it's very cost effective, is we run what we call a, a, a perpendicular patch. And we basically just cut the, cut the wall scar wider and we put three hardwood floor boards in perpendicular. And it's a cost effective way to do it. I call it a transition strip. It's still, it kind of separates your germs a little bit. And then we sand the whole floor and finish, and it looks fantastic. It's a great way to do it. Alternatively, you would have to cut back these boards and go back to joints. And basically, you would be taking the floor back from here and all the way probably back to here to patch this in. You're not guaranteed the floor will fit right. You're not guaranteed the, the width is going to be right. So this is a safer way to transition between the two floors. And it's a great technique that we use a lot on our remodeling projects. Have a great day. Thanks, Rob. All right, it's time for a make or break. Jimbo's garage made a huge coffee table with a steel base and wooden tabletop. 
This thing is a beast, weighing in at 171 pounds. I guess with it being almost 200 pounds, you really need to be happy with where your furniture is arranged once it's in your home. This was a fun project to watch him build with a combination of welding and a little woodworking. You can find this video at Jimbo's Garage on YouTube. I like to make stuff made a simple picnic table with two small fire pits inlaid down the middle, creating the perfect way to enjoy cooking outside without losing your seat. Personally, I would rather have a giant bonfire instead. Gosh, no bonfire, Sarah. Fine. Well, I can see how this would be super convenient if your yard or patio is not big enough for a giant fire pit. You can find this project over at I Like To Make Stuff on YouTube. Finally, the Samurai Carpenter built a step stool that's almost too pretty to step on. I like how simple this is and the two-tone wood choice he, that he used is really beautiful. If you're looking for some inspiration for something to make this weekend, be sure to check him out over at Samurai Carpenter on YouTube. That's it for this week's Make or Break. If one of your favorite makers builds something that you would like us to sh have on the show, you can send it to me at projects at coptool.com. Once again, it's time for construction industry news with the construction junkie. At this year's Procore Groundbreak event, we were able to interview several software companies that offer specialty solutions for the construction industry. While it makes sense, I never really thought about a need for a specialty CRM specifically for construction companies. Con Consensual did see this need and stepped in to offer a CRM solution that not only organizes contacts, but they build a solution around the complex relationships that exist in the construction industry specifically. The CRM isn't built around selling products, but around projects. This includes proposal automations and many integrations with leading construction industry platforms. You can read more and watch the entire interview at Construction Junkie. Quick question, how big is your touchscreen? <laughs> That's tiny. I know this because we spoke with Kevin from iPlan Tables who builds enormous touchscreen monitors and stands aimed at directly at plan reviewers on the job site. With sizes ranging from 43 inches all the way up to 90 inches, they all allow you to view digital plans without needing to zoom or pan. Now, supporting these enormous monitors is a unique steel stand that they build themselves right here in the good old USA. Each one allows you to adjust lift and tilt until you find that perfect viewpoint. Most importantly, these frames are seriously rugged. Kevin tells us that nearly half of the units purchased end up on job sites. If you're tired of trying to look at the big picture through a tiny screen, you should visit iplantables.com. That's it for this week's construction news. For those stories and more, don't forget to visit constructionjunkie.com. Before we go, let's take a look at some of our favorites from Instagram this week. First up, Thibaut, formerly known as the French Canadian Carpenter, updated his name a little bit this week out of respect for the Canadian Carpenter. Moving forward, you can find him at French MTL Framer. When asked, Thibaut said, same content, same passion for tools and construction, only the name has changed. Paul the tool pick attempted to change every attachment on the Metallo 12 volt interchangeable head power max drill without looking at it, just like I'm doing this segment without looking at the desk. But you're reading the delimation. I did it! Money. Real money. I will give you real money if you never make that face again. KR Chariot continues to taunt us with his amazing, although not yet available, landscaping vehicles. This time, he's using it to give a spooky hayride to the local kids. Captain Planet, in his way too tight pants, took a break from battling Dr. Sludge to show us the fine Turbo 2X dust extractor that snugly fits a wide variety of toolboxes up top. Finally, Kiefer used a huge red circle to point out the flaw in traditional F-clamps from Bessie and then demoed their new F-clamp with a gear drive that puts the handle back on the bar where it's out of the way. Clever. That'll do it for us this week. We have a new Milwaukee showcase coming out next week, so stick around for that. Yup, and we also just got back from SEMA where we met up with GearWrench to see all kinds of new tools, so keep an eye out for that recap video very soon. And really quick, with all of this new talk about the new MX system, we've been discussing what other things we could do with our new 72 volt battery. Scooter. And we want to know if you have any unorthodox ideas for what you could use with that platform. If so, let us know in the comments below. I want a scooter. I heard you. Uh, special thanks to Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring the show, who incidentally has pre-orders up for the entire line of MX tools. So do me one last favor and hit that thumbs up button before you go. We'll see you next week.